creating the most unique solo bass in Rust. No, not like that. Like this. Designed by the same guy who created the high-tech bass in the Unraidable Castle, this bass comes equipped with a shooting floor, turret angles, tons of storage, and an overpowered bunker, all compact into this cheap solo bass. And for its size, it's definitely strong, but I plan to make it even better by turning this mini tower into a camouflaged hidden fortress. But will it stay hidden after I go around causing mayhem? And if it gets found, how will it hold up during a raid? Well, to find all that out, I'm gonna have to build it. And to do that, that starts with me heading over to the beach. All right, we are in. It is me, Jay Tellis, back again with another video. And today, I'm all alone because I have a solo bass that was specifically designed for me to test out, created by one of the most unique bass designers around, Maverick. It's kind of like a mini version of the high-tech bass, so I'm super excited to try it. But before I get to doing that, I want to give you guys a quick thank you for 250,000 subscribers. Well, 257 now. You sexy people have shown so much support, and because of that, I got a big video planned for my next one. So if you don't want to miss it, help a brother out by hitting subscribe. You might not think it matters, but every single one of you hitting it means a ton to me. Even the ones that are just sitting here watching, I love you guys too. Also, if you guys ever have a video idea that you'd like to see me do, just leave it down in the comments below. Oh, and if I use your idea, I'll slide you like 25 bucks and a kiss on the lips what? for the free. But enough with all that, it's time for me to start working on this space. And I think for the starters, I'm going to start making my way inland and uh, I'm going to start making my way over to that. Boom, you know, your boy can't resist, man. So yes, I did just spawn in and yes, I currently have nothing. But having nothing means I got nothing to lose. So I farmed up a stone note and a tree with an axe I found. But after seeing the raid, it was clear that doing anything here wasn't going to be easy. And if they're raiding this base, they're most likely going to be full metal. And the only low tier weapon that would help me out going against gear like that is an Ioka. But I'm going to need some metal frags to craft one. So I went over to Oxum's to get some. Need some metal frags? I need to get back over there. Oh, dude, give me a gun. Ugh. While in Oxum's working on getting the frags, I took out a player that was... So and after recycling and stashing all the extra loot, I went to make my way over to the raid. But I ran into another guy on the zipline tower. Luckily, he wasn't the greatest. What the hell was that? And using the binoculars I just got from him, I seen the wood gate to the guy's raid base opening. That means it's the perfect time to strike. I just have to get over there quickly to thank the sponsor of today's video, Rust Clash. Rust Clash is an online gambling site with roulette, blinko, upgraders, mines, jackpot, and of course everyone's favorite, case battles. You can deposit using any of these methods and even get up to a 66% bonus when depositing, plus another 5% on top of that if you use code JTELUS or click the link in the description. Remember though, to use the site you must be 18 years or older, and even if you are, gamble responsibly and don't be stupid. Now, back to the video. He just opened the gate, this is perfect. Knowing that he either just left his raid base or just went into it, this is the perfect opportunity for me to sneak up and sit with my Yoka. But as I got closer, I didn't hear any sign of him. So I went to check in the raid. Dude, there's stuff everywhere in here. What the fuck? They're definitely not here anymore. Oh, there's a guns box too. I wonder if they left anything. Oh my God. I just gotta grab everything and get the hell out of here. Dude, there is stuff all over the ground, bro. I can't hold all this. What do I do? Bro, there's... Oh my god. I don't know where he is right now, but... Do I wait? No, I just gotta... I gotta go, bro. Oh my god, what did I just do? You might be wondering, how the hell did you just do that? Well, what I'm assuming is when I spotted that gate opening, that must have been the raider leaving to transfer loot over to his base. And in that small gap of him depoting, it left an opportunity for me to sneak in and steal everything left. Oh my god, bro, what did I just do? I don't even have a base yet, but hey, I got all these guns. Luckily, I was thinking ahead of time and I grabbed the jackhammer and a chainsaw before leaving. So I quickly farmed up enough resources to put down a temporary two by one just to stash the loot in. But I needed to get back over there. And this time's gonna be different because I'm going over with an actual weapon. Oh. That must've been him coming back. Yeah, he spawned back in. I just need to kill him here and he'll be on timer. I don't know what the hell that guy was doing. 
Knowing that he'd be on bag timer and can't spawn back in over here, I took this as an opportunity to grab everything I would need out of the raid, doing multiple trips, stashing it all in a hidden small box that I had nearby. And when the action died down and I had the opportunity to transfer the loot away, I made it back home with everything. Holy dude, we made it. I just saw so much. This start definitely went a little bit off course. I was supposed to be just farming for my base, but I'm definitely not complaining with how things went because I got stuff from the raid that's gonna be crucial to speeding up the process of getting this base down. I got jackhammers and chainsaws to farm resources and also guns to protect me while I farm up those materials. All that's left to do is find the perfect hidden spot to build this base and of course farming the material for it. And luckily, I could do both those things at once. So I spent some time hitting node after node but while doing that, I came across a naked with a gun. Oh my god. What? Bro! And after taking him out, I got back to farming up most of the material I would need for his base. Then started searching through the forest for the perfect spot to build. And in doing so, I came across this little secret cliff that was right in the middle of a forest that would be perfect for my base. I just had to make sure there was enough room for it. And after testing the footprint, it fit perfect, so I could get right to building. All right, this should be the bunker. If I put a half wall and then this, I think it should work. I don't know if I put this. I finished up building as much of the base as I possibly could with the farm I had right now and transferred over most of the loot from the two by one. But I'm still gonna need some more farm if I wanna finish this base completely. I just was gonna have to wait because while I was transferring loot, somebody took heli nearby and I needed to go see what kind of neighbors I was moving in next to. All right, well, I gotta go check that out. And after getting over there, it wasn't long before I seen the base of the guys that probably took heli. From the looks of it, these guys could definitely be a problem. How big of a problem? Well, I don't know that just yet. There's only one way for me to find that out, and that starts with me introducing myself. Dude, he has no clue I'm here. He's just looking at the heli. I just gotta get to the gate. No. No, stop, Mr. Pig. Oh. Oh, I'm about to turn you into the meanest pork chop. Oh. Wait, he's not shooting at me. Does he not know I'm here? No way this guy's this stupid. I think he's... I think he lived. Come on, peek again. Oh. Dude, these kids are coming out of thin air. Come on. Peek again. Someone behind me? Bro, who the hell is this guy? Wobber? All right, so I may have died there, but that didn't matter to me because I wasn't going over there for PvP. I was going over there for information. And you might be asking yourself, what did he learn from that interaction? Well, from my visit, I can confirm that there are at least three to four people living in their base and they were definitely geared. So I'm gonna need to ensure this group doesn't find my base location until it's fully set up or I'm gonna be in some big trouble. Luckily, I built in a really thick forest so it shouldn't be easy to find. Although after me being a nuisance, they'll probably be looking around the area for my base. So taking a little break to let things cool down in the area will probably be the best option for me right now and when i came back i heard some shots popping off at a base and when i took a closer look i could hear them talking to each other no, don't move back, I, should, back, I, don't I need my kit back i'm gonna need my kit back my boy no, no, kind of wearing yeah. my kit bro apparently the older guy in this situation just raided them and stole most of their stuff but somehow the kids got the base back before the guy could get all the loot out of it and the older guy was not happy about that so he was threatening to raid back in unless they let him inside you can open the snow so i can get to your bottom core because i didn't get uh, take anything out of there before or i can just read it if you guys want to do that this guy's an absolute dick all right the younger kid who just got raided seemed to be newer to the game and really didn't want to lose his base so he complied with what the guy was telling him to do but the way this older guy was talking to him didn't sit right with me so i decided to wait around for him to come out and say hello appreciate you guys you guys have a good one hey guys you're welcome Oh, you're a dickhead. Okay, you're getting fucking raided. Goodbye. 
just hearing him get so angry when he died and the ego when he said, Ked, okay, you're getting fucking raided. Goodbye. Made waiting outside so worth it. It also made me want to figure out where he lives, but with such an ego, he's definitely not solo. And if his group is raiding in this area and is that big of a threat, I can only think of one base that would be big enough to the point where just threatening a raid would make them comply. And that's the group that I was just messing with over at the heli. Don't get me wrong, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for his name. And little did I know how soon I'd be seeing him again, because just as I was about to go out to farm the rest of the resources to finish my base, I heard some shots popping off nearby. What? Who is that? Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh. Ah! Get me out! Since I've been progressing so fast, I still don't even have a workbench. And with no workbench, I can't craft meds. And when fighting multiple guys at once without the ability to heal up quick, it makes these fights a lot harder. God damn, I need meds! But just dying once isn't gonna make me give up. I knew I could do something here. So, I grabbed another kit and went right back. Oh. Oh, he's dead. Jesus. Oh my god. There he is, Kyoka. Although this time he wasn't alone. Unfortunately, I don't recognize any of these other names. But there was only one name I knew from the base that took Heli earlier, and that was Wobber. And for all I know, Wobber just might not be on right now, and they're just farming without it. But don't worry, I'd come to get the confirmations I need real soon. But one thing I did know for sure was these guys were not happy with me. Dude, you're such a fucking fat ass, dude. Holy fuck. You're really fucking fat. Oh. Seeing these guys angry is definitely funny, but they're slowly starting to get closer and closer to where my base is. And in its current state, it could get raided extremely easily. So it's time for me to get this base finished. Luckily, I just so happened to get provided with a bunch of free farm. All I got left to do is finish building it. But I can't just start building right after causing all that trouble because there's a chance they'd see me building and come take a closer look at my base. So instead, I decided to do some more low key stuff like finally finishing transferring out all the loot from the two by one. But while doing that, I noticed someone trying to move in close by my base, and I couldn't let that happen. What the hell are these guys doing? Bro? Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Killing naked, have fun. I will have fun. I also noticed a torch or a campfire quickly go on in what looked to be a decayed base, so I figured I'd go check that out too, because I didn't remember that base being opened early. I swear I just seen something. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, what the- I don't know who the hell was living in this base before I came across it, but they were absolutely loaded. Rest in peace to the poor guy who turned his torch on by mistake, but this is a huge W for me. I got a bunch of tier 3 guns, and I finally have a workbench now. I also feel like enough time has passed without a sign of Kyoka or the other guys, so I figured this would be the perfect time to start expanding the base. I chopped out the temporary wood ceiling, placed ladder hatches, finished construction on the shooting floor, and then the roof. At this point, the base is pretty much done and looks absolutely insane. I still plan to collect up metal fragments to turn this base completely green so it can really camouflage into the environment, but for now, the base is strong even without the camouflage. At least, it should be. I didn't realize I made a big mistake when building this. Hold up. This can't be a double door. No way, dude. The bunker's not gonna work. When building my base for easy access, I put a double door frame not thinking about the bunker. And in order for the bunker to work, it needs to be a single door because the single door blocks access to the outside actually creating the bunker. It was a stupid mistake, but I have to fix it or this base is gonna be a lot weaker. The cheapest and quietest way to break this door frame is gonna be to use handmade shells with a pump shotgun. So I got right to doing that. But after what felt like forever, I was sick of shooting this shotgun, and I was only halfway done. I need a new, faster way to break it, and I just so happened to have some satchels from that decayed base earlier. It just wasn't gonna be silent. But hey, I haven't seen Kyoka and the other guys in a while now, so maybe they got off. And even if not, it's only gonna be a few satchels, so it shouldn't draw anybody in. Right? 
Okay, with that explosion, the frame is finally dealt with, but setting off those satchels seem to have destroyed more than just the frame. Although a few broken boxes was the least of my worries right now. Those satchels seem to have drawn people in. And who was it outside my base? What the? Oh my god, it's Wobbert. It's been a while, but if you don't remember Wobbert, that's the guy who was outside the base at S9 when they took Heli. It was the first time I've seen him since that moment, but he wasn't the only familiar face I'd be seeing outside my base. Because when I went back out, I took out what I thought was Wobbert. But it turns out after checking his body, it was the one and only Kyoka. Wait, what? Why is he here? I find it very interesting that within a minute of me dying to Wobbert, Kyoka was outside my base. But after looking around, I came across Wobbert's body. So maybe they aren't teammates. Maybe I was wrong this whole time. All I know now is I need more answers. So I went right back out to get some. And little did I know, this one decision would give me all the answers I was looking for. Bro, where did these kids come from? It's Kyoka? Now I know Kyoka's out here with a teammate, but I still don't know who that teammate is. If it's Wobbert, that would finally confirm that he's part of the group that lives S9. Although the only for sure way of getting that answer is if I go over and take them both out. Well, can't you just go over there naked and let them kill you? Well, yeah, that would work too, but I'm not gonna let them get away with my AK kit. Oh my God, I do not know how to spray the LR. All right, I think that should be both of them. Yep, this is Kyoka. All right, who the hell is this other guy? Oh, it's Walter. Is it? Yeah, it's f***ing Wobbert, bro! After taking them both out, I finally have the confirmation that Wobbert is Kyoka's teammate. Meaning that he's part of the group that lives at S9 or has some sort of association with them. But finding out this information is bittersweet, because yes, now I know where he lives, but I also just confirmed I've been pissing off the biggest group in my area. And they did kill me when I was walking out my front door. Hopefully they didn't realize it was me. Uh-oh. Someone's outside. They don't know, right? Oh. oh god. Yeah, I don't think the hoping helped much here. It seems like they definitely know where I live. I waited around a bit just to see if they were gonna do anything, but it seems like they left me alone for now. Although, I know I can't just sit around waiting for them to come back. I need to get this base fully upgraded in case of a raid. And in order to do that, I'm gonna need to do some preparing, like getting bedroom kits set up, farm all the metal to fully upgrade my base, set up outer TCs, turrets, and a compound for extra protection. And once all the metal is cooked up, get this base completely upgraded to metal so that it can really be camouflaged in. Sure, Kyoka and Woobert already know where I live, but they're definitely not the only people in my area. And I'd like to keep my base hidden from as many people as possible. To start, I wanna farm up some nodes, which means I get to finally use the pure ore tea that I stole from the raid at the very beginning of the video. So I grabbed the tea and I went right out to farming. I've only been farming for like 30 minutes and this pure ore tea is nuts, dude. Holy. After 30 minutes of just straight farming, I have all the farm I could ever need to upgrade this base. I just gotta cook all the metal. But just a few small furnaces aren't gonna be enough to get all this metal smelted. Well, it could work, it would just take forever. Instead of wasting my time doing that, I wanna use my time instead to set up a compound and get some large furnaces to cook all that metal at once. So after going over to Outpost and trading some stone for a ton of wood, I was ready to build the outer TCs, place down the compound walls, metal barricades, and of course, the main reason why I was in such a rush to build this the large furnaces. I got the metal cooking straight away and now all I gotta do is wait. And while waiting, I figured I should fix up the inside of my base from when I let all those satchels off. But I went a little crazier than just placing a few boxes. I set up a bedroom, fixed the bunker, and covered the whole inside of the base with grass rugs. And it looked insane. Even after doing all that stuff inside, the large furnaces weren't even close to getting through all the metal. That means I was gonna have to stay here and constantly keep tending to them. But then I remembered I could build a furnace that needs no tending and doesn't even need wood to run. The electric furnace with the industrial stuff. I just gotta figure out how to set it up. And after what took me forever, I finally got it working. I think I did it. And if I'm being honest, I have no clue how I did it, but 
The metal should be cooked up in no time. At this point, I got the bedroom kit set up, all the metal farm, and outer TCs with the compound. Now I just have to get some turrets down and upgrade this base completely green. And I got right to setting up the turrets, but it was still gonna be some time before I'd have enough metal ready to upgrade this base completely. And initially, I planned to just sit around waiting for it. But then the sound of explosives off in the distance caught my attention, and I had nothing better to do than go check them out. There's a guy sneaking up on the raid right now. Oh, I think he's about to make a move. Yeah, he just killed him. Oh, shit. I think he's seen me. Bro! How did he not die? Oh, wait. He did die. I gotta get back over there. All right. If I'm the first one to make it here, the body should be like right around here somewhere. Oh my God. How did I manage to make it here first? There's another body with rockets. What? I have no idea how I was the first one to make it back, but I'm definitely not complaining. If I had to guess, after the original raiders got killed, they rage quit. And the guy that I ended up trading with had no idea he killed me too. So I was able to just come back and get everything. Although just in case they plan to come back, I'm not sticking around. Get me the hell out of here. Bro, what the fuck did I just do? Well, that's one way to kill some time. And it was the perfect amount too, because now I have all the metal frags I need to fully upgrade this base. So I went right out to make it fully green. This is perfect. Dude, look at this thing. It blends right into the trees. Now with the base set up and hidden, I shouldn't have to worry about not being prepared for a raid. And I'm glad it's fully set up now, cause I heard some rockets popping off in the distance, and after getting over there, I realized who it was raiding. Uh, it, bro, I was just trying to creep up, man. This was the first time I've seen Wobbert since he was knocking at my door, and I can only assume the guy I took out before dying was Kyoka. But why are they raiding this random furnace base and not me? Maybe they're waiting until they could get a few more people on, or maybe I just haven't pissed them off enough. Let me go make sure they know that I'm the one that they should be worried about. All right, they're right on this. Oh my, bro, who is shooting me? Is this them? Yep. Can Wobbert. That means this must be Kyoka. Yep. This space is active. Good, I'm getting out of here. After killing them here, I wasn't done messing with them yet. I wanted to fight them some more. But after roaming around the area, I couldn't find them. I even tried to go right outside their base at S9 and there was no sign of them. Hello, are you in there? It was weird. It honestly made me doubt if I was looking in the right area. Do they actually live at S9? But then on my way home, I seen a sign from the heavens. The original kids that were getting bullied by Kyoka were online. And they should know exactly where Kyoka lives. I just gotta ask. But after going up to the base and trying to talk to them. Hello, trick or treat. Anybody? in there hello i got no reply so i went back to base and just chilled around but then i seen somebody walking around outside unfortunately this part of my recording looks like a slideshow though so i'm gonna have to explain to you what was said at first i didn't realize who it was but i asked where he lived and he took me right to the base where i had my first run-in with kiyoka that means he was the original kid that was being bullied by him and the whole reason why i've started the mission to mess with kiyoka and since i was already talking to him and i wasn't 100 percent sure i figured i'd ask if he had any idea where kiyoka lived and he instantly replied with follow me i got excited at first but then he started heading straight towards the base that i already assumed he lived at s9 but after i asked if that was the base we were heading to he told me it wasn't. So Kyoka doesn't live at S9? Apparently this whole time, Kyoka's only been allies with the group that lives S9. His real base is at the top of the hill at T9. And this base, I can definitely raid if this is him. But before I do anything, I'm gonna need 100% confirmation that this is where he lives. So I grabbed some ladders and planned to get on the roof of the base just to get a better look. But as I got closer, I realized someone was outside setting up outer TCs. Wait, what? This guy's online? I was literally just outside his base talking about raiding him. Oh, dude, is it one of them? Yes, it's Kyoka. This is his fucking base, bro. What is this thing? What's up, man? I'm here to inspect the inside of your base. Just let me on in. Bro, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing, bro? 
I'm just here to do my inspection, you know. Let me on in. Oh, you need these walls? I got you. I got you. What's that? Hey, I got the compound all set up out here. Just come take a look. What do you mean I'm a dickhead, bro? Did you really place my walls down? Are you serious? No. Knowing 100% that this is his base not only confirms the location, it also confirms that he's definitely not invincible. Before I assumed he lived in a fully HQM base that was double compounded with turrets and SAM sites, but that's just his allies. Sure, if I tried to raid him, they definitely would pose a threat against me, but why aren't they helping him right now? Well, there's only one way to find that out, and I figured, why not ask him? If you're allied with the guys down there, why aren't they coming over to help you? I right, split them all. He's at the mall? Is it really only one? Mm, there's five. There's five of them living down there? Jeez. Well, now I know how many people are down there, but that wasn't the piece of information that I was focused on. He just told me that his friends aren't even on. That means if I raid him now, there isn't gonna be anybody to help him. So I went straight back to base, crafted up as many rockets as I could, and went back over with the boom. All right, well, uh, I gotta pray his friends don't come. his friends show up, dude, this is gonna be a lot more- oh. Holy shit! How the fuck did he know I was coming over? Well, I can't stop now. What the fuck, man? They're raiding you! Door. Yeah, PC. I just gotta seal up the front entrance and then this is all good. Oh shit. I think the base is online. Alright, we're all sealed up. Bro, someone raided you. Why'd you do that, man? That wasn't very nice. Kyoka finally got a taste of his own medicine, and it doesn't seem like he likes being on the receiving end. I mean, I can't blame him though. He was loaded, but now it's all mine. But this raid isn't over yet. I gotta get this loot out of the base and back to mine before his friends get on, or they'll just come raid back in and take everything back. But before leaving to transfer this loot, I spawned back at my base and walked over just to check if anybody was waiting outside. And I ran into Bernice sitting in the corner. Bernice? Who's Bernice? I've got no clue. But what I do know is there's no one else outside. So I gotta get home with all this loot. <laughs> we made it, baby. Fuck him. All right. I think this is the last trip. This all started with me running into some random egotistical guy that thought he was invincible bullying kids around. And I vowed to make it my mission to do whatever I could to crush that ego. From killing him repeatedly, taking his kids, to taking his whole base, I've done all I could now. But I haven't completely crushed him yet. He still has one last thing left, his allies. And they're not gonna let me get away with what I just did to him without a retaliation. And I knew that. So I sat and waited for hours for any sign of them. They just never showed up. It was getting to the point where I couldn't keep my eyes open any longer, so I had to go to bed and hope I would survive. But that's just what they were waiting for. Oh, dude, no way they never show up. Bro, I got raided? What the? They raided through the roof? What the? F Wait, they, they didn't get anything. They failed the offline raid, running out of boom just as they got to the bunker. All they got was the stuff that was in my drop boxes upstairs, but I transferred everything important into the core just before getting off. So they got nothing. After patching up the damage they did, I went over to their base to try to talk to them, but they were nowhere to be found. So I waited and waited and waited and they never got back on. 
Raiding their friend and then failing to offline raid me must have been too big of a bruise to their ego, so they just quit. I stayed on the server for a few days after just checking on them, but nothing happened besides me watching their base decay. In the end, I didn't need numbers to beat these guys, and my base never needed to be hidden, because even with them knowing where I live, they still failed to raid it.